In this video, you are going to learn how to secure access to the HTTP endpoints using JWT authorization token and role-based access control with Quarkus. In the first part of the video, we are going to create the first project called Amazon Cart. The Amazon Cart exposes three different endpoints, get, post, and delete. After that, we are going to secure our endpoints based on the user roles. In the second part, we are going to create another project, Amazon JWT, always with Quarkus. The Amazon JWT expose one get endpoint and with a private and public key, it will generate the JWT token. The user can call the get endpoint and retrieve the JWT token. The Amazon Cart project will use the same public key in order to verify the JWT token and authenticate the user. In the end, we are going to dockerize both services. Now let's start and follow my steps. Before starting, make sure to have installed in your system Java. In my case, I have installed OpenJDK 17. Apache Maven, I have the version 3.8.4 and finally Docker. Perfect. We are going to create a new Quarkus project using Apache Maven. In this video, we are going to use the version 2.7.4. The name of the project will be Quarkus JWT Out. We are going to specify some extensions needed in our project like RESTEASY, RESTEASY JSONB and SMORI OpenAPI. Good, let's open the project with a text editor. I'm going to use IntelliJ. Inside the pomxml file, we can see the Quarkus version 2.7.4 and all the extensions that we declare. The Quarkus JWT out project is the parent Maven project because during the video, we are going to create two different Maven modules representing our two microservices. Because of that, let's remove the folder source, not needed. After that, let's create the first module as Maven module with the name Amazon Cart because we are going to create a very simple shopping cart with a few endpoints. Good. As we can see, the pomxml file of Amazon cart module is very simple. It's inherited the extensions from the parent Quarkus JWT out project. Inside the Java folder, create a new package called org.js.amazon.cart. Inside this package, create our first class, Amazon item, to describe an item in the shopping cart. Let's define the ID, name and quantity field. Perfect. Let's continue and add the Amazon cart resource class to define all HTTP endpoints. For simplicity, we are going to define and use a simple array list of Amazon item without using any database. After that, let's create the first get endpoint called get items to return the entire list of Amazon item inside a response object with the status code OK 200. Don't forget to specify the produce media type application JSON on the top of the method. Perfect. Then let's define the post endpoint called add item to add a new item inside the list. This endpoint will return the entire updated list of Amazon item 
inside a response object with a status code 200. In this case, we have to remember to specify also the consumes annotation media type application JSON on top on the method. In the end, let's add the delete endpoint delete items to remove a specific item inside the list. This endpoint will return a response object with a status code no content. Good, we have completed our first service, Amazon Cart, defining some HTTP endpoints. We are now ready to compile and test the Amazon Cart service. Open the terminal, go inside the Amazon Cart folder and run the project in development mode using the command mvn quarkus dev. Perfect. As we can see, the service is up and running and listening to the port 8080. Let's try it using Swagger UI, already available because we add the Quarkus Smorai Open API extension inside the parent project. Open the browser and type localhost 8080 slash q slash Swagger UI. Good, we can see our HTTP endpoints. Let's try the get. Of course, we receive an empty list. Let's try the post, define a new item. Perfect. Now we have our list with one item. In the end, let's try the delete endpoint specifying the ID equals one. Good. All our endpoints are working as expected. As we can understand, everyone can see and manage the content of our Amazon cart. We haven't secured our endpoint based on the role of the user. It would be perfect if everyone can use the get endpoint to see the list of our cart, but only the user that are authenticated can add or delete an item inside the cart. How we can achieve that? We can use the barrier token authorization with JWT and role-based access control provided by Quarkus using the Smorai JWT extension. Let's do it. Before that, let me create the application.property file to change the HTTP port from 8080 to 8081. Good. Open the terminal, go inside the Amazon cart folder and add a new Quarkus extension called Smorai JWT. Now we can see that pomxml file updated with the new dependency. We don't have this dependency inside the parent pomxml because we added and we will use it only inside the Amazon cart service. Inside the Amazon cart resource, we are now ready to secure our endpoints. On top of the get items, add the annotation permit all. This annotation as we can imagine, allow everyone to use this endpoint. We can even omit it, but I prefer to show you. Instead, on top of the method addItem, add the annotation roles allowed. Between parentheses, we can put a string or array of string, defining the roles of the user allowed to use the endpoint. We can put admin, writer or user, it's just a string, so we can define the roles. Moving to the delete item, we can add the roles allowed annotation, putting only admin. Before test our modifications, let's add inside the application properties the configuration Quarkus Smorai always include equal true. Perfect. Now let's open the terminal and run the Amazon Cart service in development mode. Good, the server is up and running and listening to the port 8081. And we can see also the Smorai JWT extension. Open the browser, 
and go inside Swagger UI. The first thing that we can notice is the new button Authorize and the small lock icon that represents a secure endpoint. Let's try first the get. All good, no problem. Of course, the list is empty. Now let's try the post sending a new item. In this case, we receive a 401 unauthorized error, meaning we are not authorized to add a new item. In the end, let's try the delete endpoint. Also in this case, we received a 401 unauthorized error, meaning we are not authorized to delete an item inside the list. Now, the question is, what can we do to be able to use all the endpoints without having the unauthorized error? How can we authorize ourselves? We can use the Smorai JWT build extension to create a token. Let's jump inside the code and create a second module that will represent the service to generate the JWT token. Let's call it Amazon JWT. As we can see now inside the parent POM XML, we have also the sub module Amazon JWT. Open the terminal, go inside the folder Amazon JWT and add a new Quarkus extension called Smorai JWT build. We have to pay attention because this extension is different from that one used inside the Amazon Cart service. With this extension, we will be able to generate a JWT token to use it inside the Amazon Cart service. Let's move inside the Java folder and add a new package org.js.amazon.jwt. Good. Inside this package, create a new Java class, Amazon JWT resource, where we are going to implement a simple get endpoint to send the token. Let's put all extensions like application scoped, path, and then define the get JWT method. For the moment, let me declare an empty JWT string. Then we are going to create another class, Amazon JWT service, where we will create the method to generate the token. Let's put the singleton annotation instead of application scoped. Then create the method generate JWT returning a string. Good. Now we can use the JWT object from Smorai JWT build dependency. Then type issuer putting Amazon JWT, the subject putting Amazon JWT again, the groups. Those are very important because they describe the roles of the user like admin writer. Let's define the set with the roles admin and writer. Then add the expires at. And at the end, add the sign method. Perfect. Let's return this token and use it inside the Amazon JWT resource. After that, add the application.property file, putting the quarkus.http.port equals to 8082. Before trying the new service Amazon JWT, we have to generate the private key to sign the token that we want to generate. Open the terminal, go inside the Amazon JWT and create a new folder called JWT. Inside this folder, let's use the open SSL gen RSA command to generate the RSA private key.
After that, run the open SSL RSA to generate the public key from the RSA private key. Good. In the end, run the OpenSSL pkcs8 command to generate the pk8 private key needed in our project. Perfect, now we are ready. Because we use a lot of commands, let me create a file.sh where to put all the command. Don't worry, I will put it inside a GitHub repository. Good. The last thing to do is open the application.properties file and add the configuration smorai JWT sign key location specifying the location of the private key generated previously. Finally, open the terminal and run the project in development mode with the command quarkus dev. Open the browser and go to localhost 8082 q slash swagger UI. We can see a single endpoint get JWT. Here is the response, the JWT token. Let me copy it and let me go inside the website jwt.io. Here we can paste it and see the content of the JWT token. Inside the payload data, we can see the information that we put inside the code. The issuer, Amazon JWT, the subject, Amazon JWT, the groups, the user roles, in this case, admin and writer, and the expiration date. Let's run again the Amazon cart project in development mode. Reload the Swagger UI page and then click on the button Authorize and paste the JWT token that we copied previously and click on Authorized. Let's try the post endpoint to add a new item inside the list. We can still receive 401 unauthorized error. We sent the JWT token inside the request, so why doesn't work? because we haven't configured the Amazon Cart service to verify the JWT token. We need to use the public key generated inside the Amazon JWT project. Open the application properties file of Amazon Cart and put two new properties. MP.JWT verify issuer, Amazon JWT and MP JWT verify public key location, putting the path of the public key. Let's run the Amazon Cart project again in development mode and the Amazon JWT project. Perfect. Both services are up and running. Go inside Zwagger UI and try the get JWT endpoint. Copy the response, go inside the Zwagger UI of Amazon Cart and again try the post endpoint. And now it's working. We have added a new item inside the list. Let's try the delete endpoint. Just perfect. Let's stop both projects. In the end, let's add the extension container image jib inside the parent project to dockerize the Amazon cart and Amazon JWT services. Let's take a look at the pomxml file and we can see our new Maven dependency. Now let's open the application.property file of Amazon Cart and add the configuration property to build the Docker image.
we can copy and pass them inside the application properties of Amazon JWT, but we have to change the container image name. Open the terminal and package both the projects with the command and when clean compile package. Let's do the same for Amazon JWT. Good. Inside the terminal, type docker images. Perfect. We can see our new docker images, Amazon cart and Amazon JWT. In the end, inside the parent project, create a docker compose file needed to run our images. First service is Amazon cart. The container name, of course, is Amazon cart. The image is Amazon slash cart with the tag dot point zero point zero snapshot. We need to expose the port 8081 to 8081 and define the environmental variables related to the location of the public key. Let's bind the JWT folder inside the parent project where we generated the keys to the internal JWT folder. Replicate the service section also for Amazon JWT. Just put the right port binding and of course the right environmental variable of the location of the private key. Perfect. Open the terminal and type docker compose app. Both the containers are up and running, one to the port 8081 and the other to the port 8082. Let's try them using all the endpoints. First slash JWT to retrieve the token and then all endpoints exposed by the Amazon card services. Good. Because we have written a lot of command, let's create a simple start.sh file to put all of them sequentially. To summarize, first generate the keys, then package the Amazon card project. After that, package the Amazon JWT project. In the end, run Docker Compose app. Perfect. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to my channel to be always updated about new videos that I will upload. And see you in the next one. Bye.